So, all right. So for this um, uh, parallel talk, so we will be having um, Mr. Jakarpong uh, Tawala. So he is a um, satellite analyst of the United Nations um, uh, uh, UNOSAT uh, rapid mapping team. And he has over 10 years of experience uh, using uh, geospatial uh, tools for different applications and also for um, international cooperation. So he's currently working as a senior um, satellite analyst um, doing rapid mapping at uh, United Nations uh, Satellite Center in Asia Pacific office in Bangkok. Um, in 2018, I got the chance to meet Jakarpong in person. <laughs> so it seems like quite a long time ago when he was still with the uh, GISTA, the space agency in, of Thailand. So that's the geoinformatics um, and space technology uh, and development uh, agency. Um, so now he's moved on to uh, UNOSAT. So he holds a master's degree in uh, space technology application from Beihang uh, University in China um, in 2012. And then um, some of his uh, you know, uh, expertise, fields of expertise are geographic information systems, uh, remote sensing, climate change monitoring, uh, big data analytics, uh, rapid damage assessment, and science uh, communication. Um, also, uh, before I turn over the um, uh, call to uh, Jack Rappel, I just wanted to um, share this one again. So after, so we'll be having uh, until 12.45 or after Jack Rappel's talks, we'll have the Q&A session. So for this one, um, if you attended the Nick Clinton's talk earlier, so we'll, be o we'll also be using Slido. Um, so log in as a participant and use Earth Engine SG4. Uh, like this one, and you can type in your questions there and we can um, read out the questions. Uh, yeah. Um, and also, unfortunately, uh, today, um, Jacopong has mentioned that uh, he won't be able to uh, share a video of himself. Um, so um, yeah, so I hope uh, you would still be uh, intent on listening to his talk. So yeah, um, let me then uh, turn this over to um, Jacopong. Yep. Thank you so much, Don. I think you hope you hear me well. Yes, yes. We okay. Can. Yeah, thank you for your kind introduction. That's very nice. And yeah, we have met in 2018. That's a very yeah. great time. We also uh, sharing knowledge together regarding about the Google engines in that time. So let I share my screen. Do you see it? Yes, yes, we okay. can. Okay. All right. So knowing that I have uh, half an hour for this presentation and this talking. So I will go to uh, very briefly in some part because it's quite complicated uh, regarding about international uh, framework. The topic is quite very general. So like a Google engine for UN humanitarian assist, assistant mission because this is the main uh, mission of UN, everyone know that. So my talk will include uh, about you know that in a briefly and also in international humanitarian framework, which uh, and before we go to technical, I will just give you a brief uh, reminding about key consideration on flood in South Asia, and lastly we will talk about. Uh, the example of my analysis, which is current flood analysis in Myanmar using Google Engine. And this work we are cooperating with Myanmar Information Management Unit or MIMU, who are the main uh, agency who work information for Myanmar. So you know that is now uh, under UNITA. So UNITA stands for United Nations Institute for Training and Research, uh, provide innovative learning solution to individual organization and institutional to enhance a global decision-making and support country level action for shaping a better future. So the mission is providing high quality learning solution and also addressing supporting government and UN other partner uh, with a knowledge service, including uh, technology, also uh, space technology or remote sensing as well. And also we facilitating knowledge and expert experience traveling through network 
and innovative process. The lastly, integrating innovative uh, strategy approach and methodology into our learning. So this is about UNITAR. But when we zoom into UNITAR and previously, we are just a program under UNITAR. So UNITAR stands for uh, UNITAR Operational Satellite Application Program, this is the previous name. But this last June, 9th of June, we have changed the name to New Technician Satellite Center due to the adoption of resolution from 25 session of Economic Social Council, which is one of the six main organ of UN, which is uh, this resolution recommended by uh, UN Secretary General uh, to the Council. And the Council recognized as you know, that as the U Technician Center. So this is a big, uh, I'll say, historical resolution for us. So it comes with the mandate to provide your technician fund program and specialized agency with a satellite analysis, training, and capacity development at their request. This is all about UNOSAT. And more information about UNOSAT, uh, we operated since 2001, yes, about 20 years. This year, we're going to have a big survey, uh, anniversary for 20 years old. So. And we are fully candidate to, sorry, fully. Uh, dedicated to satellite imagery analysis and capacity development focus on remote sensing and geospatial analysis. Currently, we have uh, about 40 professional staff and 11 outpost centers. The main, uh, the, I mean, the headquarter units are located in Genoa office. And another three regional office located in Nairobi, Kenya, and New York, USA, and lastly in Bangkok, Thailand. So where we are sitting here. Another, we have support office from uh, another nine, yep. And the nine office in the country, we are working under the project implementation from Fiji, Solomon Island, Vanuatu. And this year, we just launched a new project under uh, support from Norway. We're gonna launch another six office, new office in Laos, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Uganda, and Nigeria. As I mentioned earlier that UNISAT activity, uh, we have mainly analysis and research on uh, satellite imagery, UI for geographic, and also training and capacity building. Rapid mapping is a key service for UNISAT from UNISAT, which provide the satellite Im imagery analysis during humanitarian emergency, both a natural and also conflict situation. We operate 24 and 70 hours because we have the team located in globally. In, I work here and respond here in Bangkok. We have another team in uh, Genoa and also in Ireland and in America. So uh, the, this is statistic that showing last year we have activated from UN agency and another regional agency to monitoring disaster at globally about 44 activation or 33 countries. And particularly in ASEAN region, uh, we have been activated nine times and produce about 65 products. And frequent user, we are working with uh, mostly in UN agency, UN OSHA, UNICEF, WHO, and UFE, so many that, and also National Disaster Management Office, who are making a request to us last year. This is some example in ASEAN region that we covered with UNS CAP, JISDA, and AHA Center. Mostly you have seen here about flood because we this region is born of a cyclone. And this is some example of the product that we uh, support to UN agency to assessment in this region. This is the map in Philippines and Vietnam, yes. We are keep monitoring and extracting uh, produce as a map and also produce as the report web map and also data available in uh, Unitar website. You have to in this link and freely share to everyone that uh, can uh, use this at your benefit. So we also using a 
Google Earth Engine for analysis, the satellite imagery, and not only of all flooding or not only in this as a emergency response, but also in another aspect of uh, preparedness. Not only Google Earth Engine, we also develop our own uh, artificial intelligence model for rapid mapping activation, which is automatically receive uh, SAR data, uh, Sentinel-1 data from ESA and using a uh, flood AI model to generate a flood map. But before coding uh, launch to the website, we have a human validation or to QC, to QC the uh, data before going to analysis. This is a protocol that we developed in our team. Here is the interface that user will get the data from Flood AI. And I think this uh, uh, dashboard monitoring Flood situation in Myanmar, which is already installed in Mimo website. Mm, this is, so the user will uh, automatically see the number of affected people divided in each minute in each uh, ministry trip boundary and a total number of affected people. Uh, user also can download share file here. If you see it under the logo, it has a download link to a share file. So this is something that we develop newly. So about the international humanitarian framework for this as a response, this framework is uh, established since 1991 with this uh, cooperating from United Nations Office for uh, the Coalition of Humanitarian Affairs or UN OSHA with a resolution 40, 46 slash 182 uh, endorsed to establish the emergency relief coordinator. This is the position and also the interagency standing committee, which has a lot of, uh, a bunch of uh, UN agency to be the member of this committee. And this is, uh, a, look like a global uh, mechanism, but scaled out to a country mechanism. They have a humanitarian coordinator in each uh, country team. This is, the framework in country level that each uh, sector will closely working with government in ministry level and they have uh, a connection together already. And this will work when the country make a request to, to UN. And so this mechan mechanism will activate it. In the IASC cluster approach, they have uh, several tools and services to support the work uh, under this mechanism. You see on the picture that each uh, UN agency will respond in different sector. For example, UNICEF respond in nutrient during the emergency relief, sorry, during the emergency response, or UN OSHA respond in shelter, or UNDP respond in early recovery. So, in each part of the, the work under the emergency response, it has to have uh, the updated information to for planning or for uh, implementation on in the country. So I highlight here information management is one of the key tools for this team. And you know that it's a part of this uh, information management, which respond to uh, generate social imagery and support to this group. So this is the mechanism that we work with uh, this UN, another UN agency and also regional uh, agency. So after we receive the request from them by email or by call, by text, something rapid, we go to situation analysis, grabbing the data from GDAX, the website that provide uh, 
this as a list and also grabbing some data from EO Barza from uh, ESA and some information, some data, satellite data we get from International Shutter. So which is the worldwide cooperation among space agency, which is uh, sharing satellite imagery during the uh, disaster and combine this data with the appropriate world prop data. We do some analysis, follow UNICEF stand-up of procedure and using many technology like our Google Engine, Flood AI to analysis. And within 24 hours, we will launch a preliminary access report, also web or some web map that can fit back to a user to see the overall situation. And after that, within three days, we within three days we will launch another map of GS data and also some statistics to the user. This is overall uh, mechanism that we were with them in previously. So now we jump to uh, about technical things. We're getting about the key consideration on flood inside data. So I you see here the Sentinel-1 acquired on 25 August in Myanmar. In these images, you see a lot of flood showing here like a water uh, resting in back color. So someone may observe that, okay, all is flat, but in each uh, yellow circle that has some different definition. So actually I want to play some game with you guys, but I think we have very limited time. You just notice and uh, answer by yourself, like a which part is flat and which is not flat. I will give you the answer after this. So it's interesting that looking at number one, it's like, okay, we have a water here. Can we say this is flat? But it has some tiny square in here. Probably it's not flat. Uh, I'll give you later. And about number six, this is definitely a, uh, it's a liver, but only one image. We cannot say this is uh, flat or a normal liver. And number eight is quite obvious, showing this is a new water surface, something like that. So I will show you the answer first. Here is the result that we generate from Google Engine using two different uh, depth of acquisition and combined shatter. All the red color here represent to a new water surface, but it's not mean that all is a flood. So you see the output already, but I can I will show you the idea how to process this. So as I mentioned that we have, we used to uh, satellite imagery before crisis and after crisis. We just put before crisis in a red channel. And then after crisis put in a green and blue channel to make a color composite image. The result we got here, the result we got here, all the red color is represent in, uh, represent as the new water surface. And if there is some sensitive analysis uh, during in rainy season, because they're gonna have some, how's it, a season of plantation. They water in a, uh, agricultural land. So in our result, we will reflect to a new water surface as well. So this is something we need to carefully, but everything that should be done in rapid because we are in emergency response. So now I would go to maybe just random two or three location to explain you what happened here. As I mentioned earlier, in the circle number one, it looks like, yeah, the red is water, is new water, but here it looks like a water for agriculture, more than flood, because, yeah, this is Myanmar and they are uh, water, the, water the rice field in this, during this particular month. At number five, 
this is interesting compared with number three. This is definitely the reservoir. But number five, not much water increasing. And number three, yeah, we see increasing water show as the red here. Oh. And number seven, also something interesting because in Solidar, we will get a how is it shadow of the mountain that leaves like as black as well. So this is something easily to analyze as the water, but we need to careful on that. And number eight here is definitely flood. And number six here is still showing the uh, water, uh, river water and clearly. I will show you step by step on how to analyze this. Just, uh, this is the overall uh, step that I follow using Google engine. So the flood extraction using, uh, I'm using 25 August uh, of Sentinel-1. Uh, you may already familiar with the coding here, this first step, just uh, gathering the bunch of uh, satellite imagery using before and after. And for this example, I used the before crisis in May, because as compared May is like a normal situation. And after crisis, I'm using the image from uh, August. From the image, you obviously see that the water is increasing. So in a real work that we use a stack image to assess the damage over all the area, if we file the flood like this, we will go to another step. But this stack image will help us a lot to uh, a quick assessment the situation in this region for further analysis, or we just uh, located at the damage zone. So after we notice the damage on the uh, analysis, so we will go to the subtract uh, step, which means using after image, subtract with uh, before image. The result we get here some differential image to something different between two images. And then uh, processing some thresholding to extract the uh, extract the flood. But before we go in thresholding, uh, we do some smoothing to reduce the noise as usual. We know that SA produce a lot of noise on this. And I'm comparing here with a different of uh, smoothing value that we come that we shake uh, the left is zero you see some lot of noise here and the right is 50 of smoothing is clearly and clear boundary of water and after that as i mentioned we doing some uh thresholding to uh extract the flood layer extent so at the at the image here, you see all the uh, blue layer here represent to the water that appeared in that images. But I'm um, compare here again with the different value between uh, zero and minus 10 to see a different uh, value that we extract from the images. So. In each particular area, we have to uh, check which value is like a possible and compatible with the result, which compare with a state image and get a result on that. Sometimes we, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we get the, I'll say the shadow of the mountain as a water in analysis. So we need to, uh, eliminate it out using the slope mask, which already provide in core engine. This is very useful to 
and remove it. And the finally, we get a flood water, which not include the permanent water, which not include the uh, mountain shadow, and also not include, uh, but somehow particular it includes some agriculture water from agriculture. So uh, our analysis is not stopped like this. We still ex have to export that and then go to a human uh, check again on the data before go to a product. After we extract the flood extent in Unisat SOP, we will to analysis with another data set like a facility location, transportation, land use, and population to see the different of damage which uh, in this area. So in this uh, showing, we overlay with some school. Before that, we calculate the flood extent by overlay with uh, administrative and guest statistic. So this statistic is important for uh, humanitarian assistant agency in the field that can uh, estimate the situation and number of damage. Here is we overlay the flood with a uh, damage crew to see which crew is underwater or affected from the flood. Okay. So that's I go very quickly about the our overall uh, procedure for the flood analysis using Google Engine that give us a lot of benefit on this. So I would like to summary that Google Engine is a great tool for even emergency response, but somehow it need to wait for updating data source for a while, but it's still very useful because as Nicholas mentioned in earlier that the prototype model that we developed in Google Engine, any part of the world that can be applied for another area as well. So working in Google Engine is very useful for us as well for uh, emergency response. And also, you know, uh, open for cooperation to Charlie develop the model for satellite analysis, both in uh, Google Engine and another platform particular to support the UN humanitarian mission, because we would like to ensure that satellite imagery is truly able to bring the value to improve uh, human life. So I think I finished my presentation here. I over to you, Don.